is this is going to have a significant debris removal mission. I think the biggest thing that I can say right now is, again, at the direction of the president, he has asked me to make sure that we have every federal resource available to support the people of North Carolina and thinking about those resources in perhaps a way that we wouldn't traditionally use them. And he has directed me to stay as long as it takes to ensure that all of our federal family are here supporting North Carolina and we're meeting the needs that the governor has identified. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator. Our North Carolina National Guard has played a significant role both in search and rescue and in the delivery of commodities. I'm going to recognize the Adjutant General of the North Carolina National Guard, Guard uh, Major General Todd Hunt. Thank you, Governor. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, National Guardsmen for their dedication and service uh, for the state of North Carolina. I'd also like to thank the Asheville Airport for being our partner and helping to distribute commodities through our airlift, which you see behind me. Right now, the National Guard, we have over almost 800 people on duty for this specific event. Uh, we are permission, our primary responsibility and our primary focus right now is still search and rescue or recovery and then a relocation followed by commodities. This morning we brought in 100,000 um, 100, pounds of water and commodities on a C-17. We've also done 100,000 pounds through our uh, helicopter lifts that we have. We continue to service the area. We've hit 18, I'm sorry, eight counties within the region already with commodities. And we're gonna to continue to push soldiers into the region to help the citizens of the Western North Carolina. Thank you, Governor. One of the major issues we have is uh, ingress and egress and making sure that we clear roads. We still have some communities that are cut off. Our North Carolina Department of Transportation has been working hard to clear roads and to get roads back open. I'm gonna call on our Secretary of Transportation, Joey Hopkins. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, our hearts go out to everyone here in Western North Carolina. We have an employees that are directly impacted by this, as well as everybody else that has friends and families. Um, we have, at this time, over 300 roads closed due to damage, landslides, rock slides, fallen trees, mud on the road. Some roads are breached, some bridges are gone. Uh, right now, I-40 in the western part of the state is probably the worst damage we have. There's about four, a four-mile section where we lost eastbound 40. Uh, we are hopeful that we can open 40 on the east side of Asheville in the coming days. Right now, that is open, but it's only open to uh, people responding to the storm. It's not open to the public at this time. Uh, the damage is severe, and we're continuing to tell folks, if you don't have a reason to be in North Carolina, do not travel on the roads of, of Western North Carolina. We do not want you here if you don't live here and you're not helping with the storm. So that'll continue to be our message pushing forward in the coming days. If you've been on the map apps, they are also sending that same message out. So we'll continue saying that. Uh, this is an all hands on deck type of event. We have over 1600 employees working now. We have over 73 contract crews helping us also, and that number is growing every day. We have crews coming from other states. Uh, tomorrow, Florida is sending crews up here to help us, and they're also bringing some assets like temporary bridges to help us make temporary repairs. So we're doing that. And I do want to say again that many of our crews that are working, they have not been home. They do not know what their own damage is. And due to the communication issues, they have not been able to find out from their own families how they're doing. So I'm very thankful and grateful for their dedication as, as public servants in the state of North Carolina and my hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to them too. Uh, in an effort to help, we've also secured a location for housing for our employees because some of the hotels either don't have power or water or the ones that do don't have rooms. So that'll be set up in the next day or so for about 250 people and we're working on that. And I also want to echo what the governor and others have said. I want to thank our many partners, along with our staff, that helped to alert people. It helped to re respond to storms and downed trees. That goes from the North Carolina National Guard to the State Highway Patrol, local law enforcement, first responders, and even private citizens are helping clear trees. 
We learned today that Mission Hospital has also helped to clear trees from roads so their employees can get to the hospital to help serve the critical care needs of our people in Western North Carolina. And lastly, I want to thank our federal partners at FEMA and FHWA. You can see FEMA boots on the ground here, and we're grateful for that and grateful for their assistance. I've been in contact with our FHWA division administrator and also the acting FHWA administrator too, and I'm grateful for their help. This is one of the most catastrophic events we've ever seen in North Carolina, and I just ask for your patience as we continue to try to solve the transportation issues here in North Carolina. Thank you. We're also concerned about our health care facilities, our hospitals, our nursing homes. We have with us uh, today Secretary of Department of Health and Human Services, Cody Kinsley. Thank you, Governor. As Governor Cooper said, we have been focused at the Department of Health and Human Services on ensuring the stability of our health care system here in the region. We have 22 acute care hospitals in Western North Carolina. As of last night, all had had their power restored back onto the grid. All of them had generator power during the storm, so we're able to continue operations and supporting their communities. And we've been in direct, near hourly contact with those facilities to support a number of resource requests. And with support from the North Carolina National Air Guard and emergency management, we've been able to get food, water, fuel, and other supplies to those healthcare facilities to make sure that they stay operating. Today, we went to Mission Hospital to see firsthand the heroic efforts of the individuals of that hospital, over a thousand staff that have been sleeping there every day to ensure they could continue operations and supporting their community. We continue to work to bring them resources. They had their power back on Saturday night, and I know we're all focused, working very hard to restore water resources in that community, but meanwhile, bringing in temporary solutions to support water there. We're also very focused on our long-term care community and facilities, skilled nursing homes, adult care homes, and we're proactively working with our insurers to identify individuals that are at home, on oxygen and other medical supplies to make sure we can proactively reach out to them, support emergency management to bring resources to them. We've activated our patient transfer system so that hospitals all across the state are stepping up to bring individuals in need of critical care out of hospitals in Western North Carolina if they can't get the care immediately. Our entire department has rallied every resource to make the difference. We're so grateful for the work of FEMA who immediately brought forth a disaster medical assistance team on the ground at Mission Hospital, and we are in this for the long haul and into recovery. Thank you. We also have with us the Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eddie Buffalo, our, our head of the Highway Patrol, Freddie Johnson, and Congressman Chuck Edwards is here as well. We'll be glad to take your questions. First, we knew that this was going to be a significant event and local officials told people to get out of low-lying areas. We also know there are going to be a significant number of fatalities here. Uh, the devastation uh, was beyond belief. And even when you prepare for something like this, this is something that's never happened before in Western North Carolina. Search and rescue teams are continuing to work. Uh, we even talked with some people who are still hoping to get and talk with uh, their people. And as phone service comes back up, we'll know a little more. I'm going to ask Will Ray to respond specifically to see if he knows that number. Do you know of number of people? Okay, we don't know the number that has been requested. But we asked people to call 211 if they're trying to get a hold of somebody. Don't call 911 right now on that kind of issue. So we're, we're getting reports from AT&T and Verizon. Their initial problems were significant in that landslides cup main fiber lines for them. 
We've asked them and pushed them to bring in their deployable assets. So more of them are getting into the area and we're getting reports that more and more have cell service. Will, would you want to add something to that? I would say progress is the, is, is the key. We know we still have a lot of work to do again, but I think we are pushing our commercial providers uh, as well as, uh, as other partners across the, the, the commercial space to bring in mobile assets of, of a variety of types to be able to provide to critical sites, to local EOCs, to some of our public safety answering points or, or other, other critical facilities. Again, they are, they are very integral to what we do. They are a huge piece of it. We know communications is important for everybody. And so we're going to continue to, to push and encourage there. Next question right here. Right here, Governor. Sorry. Governor, yeah. what do you say to the residents who feel that the local and federal response wasn't fast enough following this storm? So first, people are working around the clock to provide help to them right now. Food, water, working hard to make sure that we've got shelters open all across this area. and working to get power back on, when you have a situation where communities are completely cut off, when first responders can't even get in because water is still there and rivers are rising right now as we speak, a lot of work is done. What we want to tell people is that more help is on the way and help is continuing. Uh, this is our main mission right now and this is a massive coordinated effort to help this area, both in the short term and in the long term. Next question right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let Director Ray answer that issue. So I think as we think about the size and scale of event, that's why we have taken the approach that we have, especially for distribution of water and food. So where we are able to get ground routes in reliably and safely, we are using those routes. There's, uh, as, as Secretary Hopkins mentioned, there is a ground route in through on I-40. There is a ground route in via I-26. We know there are many areas of the western part of the state that are still that still have major access challenges, which is why we've put in place the operation you see here of moving uh, using aircraft to move commodities into those impacted areas. Right now, we are trying to surge as much of the commodities into the entire impacted region. Yesterday, as an example, either via ground or by air, 20, 30 counties had commodities delivered to them yesterday. We know that we're not going to be able to meet right now out of the gate the universal need that everyone has. That's why we are surging up both our distribution. So we're putting additional drivers on to be able to get more trucks on the road to get commodities in faster. We're continuing to increase the number of aircraft that are operating and we're working with our partners in FEMA to increase the amount of commodities that we're getting pushed from them every day. Currently, we're on a cycle now of 40 trailers a day of food and water, in addition to what we're procuring on the open market or have in our warehouses that we are working to distribute into the entire impacted area across North Carolina. I'm sorry, say that one more time. So I think, um, the, the impact to our water systems across the state, in, is, especially here in Buncombe and Asheville, are significant. As the administrator said, we're using some of our partnerships um, with the U.S. Army Corps and FEMA to get some teams on the ground to determine what is the long-range solution to get these water systems back online, as well as plan some of the, the uh, mid-range solutions to get the hospital, other critical infrastructure back online so that folks do have running water. I think we are, um, and back back to the back to the previous question. I, I I will say we have continued to deliver water both here to Buncombe County to support Buncombe as well as the city of Asheville. We know there is more need there. We know there is more that they need in both food and water, and we will continue to surge those resources in to be able to 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 support that local jurisdiction.
Right now, Mission Hospital is bringing in upwards of 20 trucks a day of water to support the hospital's operations, in addition to package sterile water so they can continue operations. We know it's a huge challenge for the hospital and we're working actively with them to determine other potential strategies. As Director Ray said, midterm solutions that will get running pressurized water into the facility as soon as possible is a top priority for us. Thank you.